let's start with the um, proving the minutes of February 5th. Okay. Okay, there it is. All right. I, I have two corrections. Uh, one correction, one addition. For uh, attendance, Al Tosti and Jennifer Seuss were attending remotely. And on item eight on the second page, um, DEI. Yep. The vote was 13 in favor and one opposed. That's the, how it's written. You don't have a one. I don't have a one. You don't have a one. Oh, one opposed. Oh, I have the. Did someone just write that in? Yeah, that's just kind of. Oh, okay. So. Didn't get tracked. Any other corrections that anyone noticed? Rebecca? Um, on 9A, the vote uh, was that should refer to the Arlington Youth Counseling Center. It says Council oh, on oops. Aging on yep. the front end. So just correct that to AYCC. And then um, in the table, sorry. Yep. In the table, the very last um, item where it says Council on Aging Enterprise Fund, I would insert the word transportation for Council on Aging Transportation yeah. Enterprise okay. Fund. Uh, and I just want to check with um, Sean or Daryl on item three under fire. Uh, third sentence, advanced life services, medical services is covered by Armstrong and transportation is covered by firefighters. Is that correct? Um, no. I think uh, Armstrong provides transportation now. Yeah, that was covered by firefighters. Okay, you want me to just delete that? I would delete Okay. Does anyone have anything else? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. All, all in favor, say aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. I will stand here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 13, 4, 0 against 1. Sorry, can, I, um, can you say that one more time? I'm, I'm freezing a lot. I'm sorry. 13, 4, 0, zero against, and 1 in favor. 1 that's it. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, it's already muted. Oh, it's the computer. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be staying at the school. All right, so the minutes have been approved. Um, we need to revoke the other minutes. Okay. Um, we. We want to make sure that we've noted who was present virtually at the prior minutes. And Tara, you, you, um, yeah, I'm sorry, this is going so slowly. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so that would be Monday, the 29th, Monday the 29th. Jordan, were you virtual on the 29th? Or was it, I think it was Monday, the first meeting, not but not Wednesday. Correct, so 29th I was for, uh, virtual. Okay. okay. <clears throat> and the 31st? I don't think anyone was virtual that day. And then we just did the fifth, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. So I'd like a motion to reconsider the, the minutes of the 29th. There a so moved. Moved. Second? Second. 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 
All in favor of moving to reconsider the minutes of the 29th, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that's unanimous. I'd like a motion to amend the minutes of the 29th to add um, Jordan's attendance remotely. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that's unanimous. All right, thank you. Right. Um, and Tara sent around the preliminary assessments for Minuteman. Everyone got that? Right. And Minuteman will be coming in on yeah, March 11th, right? Yes. And right now we're looking at having the schools in on Monday, March 25th. So mark your calendar for that. Um, does anyone have any updates on anything we've covered in prior meetings? Any follow up information on anything? Charlie? Uh, I do on the auditor, but I'll take it up during the controls later. Okay. Anybody have anything else? All right. So we have um, the controller's budget and retirements um, at least tonight. You want to take it here from here, Charlie? Yes. Is Carolyn here? No. no, she's not going to be. Yes, it's me. Um, you want me to share that, Charlie? Yeah, you, uh, maybe I can share. Can I share okay, it? yeah. Uh, let, sorry, let me just enable that really quick. Brave soul. Okay, now you should be able to. Okay. Can you see it? Almost. Be there in a second. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So, <clears throat> Carol and I met with uh, Edith Cody on the uh, 7th. By the way, the, the page uh, 39, is right? Page 39. Uh, so, a couple of different issues here. Salary and food expenses and adjusted budget. And uh, some interesting things that uh, she's accomplished. Um, the first thing is um, the original the original uh, salary budget uh, which uh, is on the screen here right it's also in your book has the comptroller at higher than the max in the end schedule we very politely explained to her that uh, the no no and it's just a hour it appears that that the uh, town manager and the finance director <clears throat> are planning to uh, grant a COLA to the M schedule personnel uh, sometime after the uh, collective bargaining issues are settled. And uh, <clears throat> so that, that's fine, but she still can't get the COLA that they had in here. If she's above mm -hmm. the max in the M schedule. Mm -hmm. So, Carolyn and I had independent discussions with um, uh, I forgot the, the finance director, Alex McGee, and with um, Carolyn, uh, Karen Malloy. And um, they have agreed that they will solve the problem probably by changing the M schedule and the classification schedule. Mm -hmm. And including a um, an adjustment for her salary, probably either in the M schedule or in the I mean in the reclass warrant article or in the collective bargaining issue. But it can't be it can't be in the regular uh, budget. I mean I can't imagine our chairman defending uh, a salary schedule above the max in front of town meeting. So. Um, there is a, a somewhat of a an apparently large adjustment in this uh, person, uh, Zheng, I can't remember her first name, but um, she's been reclassed as a senior accountant. Um, and there's an adjustment made after the um, last year's budget, so that's why it's not clearly reflected. And then uh, Guyan is the principal accounting clerk, she's a position. So, so 
fundamentally, uh, the, in addition to Ida, the, the, the three people there are, are relatively new in the in the department, which has an, an effect on the expenses. Uh, so on the Okay, so in any event, we we changed the, um, the if you look on the slide here in slide four, the uh, M schedule max for the, for the comptroller is shown, and so what we did is we ch we changed the uh, increase to the comptroller to get it to the max that's permitted in the current M schedule, and then anything else has to be addressed in the two warrant articles that I just described. Uh, I'm going to skip. I somehow I inserted these slides in the wrong place here. Um, so the resulting, I meant to pass these out. Can you uh, pass these around? Thank you. I have a, a these, uh, the new budget is on this sheet of paper here. So I'm just going to it So you can see on this uh, next slide the adjusted salary for the comptroller. And then there's a um, the adjusted difference is the reduction of 2282. And then um, on, on the expense budget, uh, that's what is through the salary. And uh, again, the total budget, the, the cross check total budget is adjusted by. Uh, 22, 82. So um, the the one one thing that we investigated with her somewhat um, seriously was whether or not the prior uh, expense levels were appropriately being reflected. In other words. Uh, you know, if you had for a number of years, she had lower expenses, and now suddenly they're getting higher. And it turns out that she had vacancies in the department the last couple couple of years that resulted in lower um, uh, out of state travel and in state travel expenses and lower training expenses. Now that she's got um, essentially these three new people, um, they 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 all need to be trained on munis, uh, and that's pretty intensive training session plus. She and the senior accountant have to be, uh, I'll use the term certified, I'm not sure that's the exact term, but there's three different accounting, three different organizations they have to be certified by. One is MUNIS, one is the MMMA, um, Mass Municipal, something or another accountants, and the other is the MIA. It's the MIA. So uh, the, the uh, expense budgets are really going back to the level where they were in the past uh, and, and will be spent as opposed to not being spent. Um, so I'd like to go back now to, uh, uh, to the chart of accounts issue. Um, so he basically created a new chart of accounts, and I believe I uploaded uh, the document on that in the uh, that would show up in the uh, SharePoint. If it's not there, I'll get it there. But it's a fairly uh, difficult task, a large task. And uh, so she she implemented that change herself with her staff. And if and if she had brought in outside consultants, it would have cost more than $100,000. This, this was like you know, a year long or a year and a half long effort. So um, we will see a new chart of accounts that are much more logical and organized going forward. And um, they will, uh, the, the accounting department will take the past year's data and budgets and recast it to the new chart of accounts so that we won't go uh, bananas trying to understand the budgets 
with one set of numbers and then another set of numbers. In other words, they will reconstruct the history in the new in the new charter of accounts. And and the uh, main uh, intent here is to provide uh, better control and better transparency on uh, mostly expense spending, but also um, labor spending, some labor spending. Um, generally, generally speaking, I, I felt that they needed a new charter of accounts, you know, for the last 10, 10 or more years. Uh, but um, nobody got around to it except for me. And I, I personally think uh, that she's one of the better um, managers that we've had in that uh, county department, in, in my memory. And, and she's uh, pretty energetic. And, and she, you know, one of the reasons why we're um, being somewhat efficient this finance committee session is because um, I think we're running into fewer errors than we had in the past in, in the reports that they're giving us. And that's in part due to her uh, aggressiveness. So um, that's it for the accounting um, for the accounting budget. And um, I think we do small print edition. Okay. So uh, we are supporting a. Um, Taxation total budget of 363,062 for the comptroller's budget, and we have to move that. Um, then we adopt that. Second. Second. All right. Questions? Alex, you know, Are you going to go further in the or Is that coming up? Or, or, uh, the, you had some materials available about progress in the Um uh, yeah, I put it. I think it's is it on the website. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't. I wasn't. I mean, there's a lot of. You mean on the on the. Chart I was in the email. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to drag everybody through that. Okay. okay. Well, my, my question was going to be whether there was any uh, initiatives towards moving the budget process to this. Well, that's what I. Oh, actually, moving the budget process. Well, using the new budget model. Uh, we didn't uh, discuss that. Okay. Okay. Um, but I assume because you have got this in the new chart of accounts that it will be largely driven by you. Okay. Because yeah, a lot of the mistakes you're referring to are because we have this five I, I Excel agree. spreadsheets. Yeah. yeah. So, but that's actually more at the Alex McGee level and his budget director. Okay. As opposed to Eda Cody. Right. No. Well, she needs to enable it. Yeah. She has a basic information. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, Sophie? Can you just re explain this to me? Um, I'm sorry, I, I don't, I might have zoned out a little bit, but on her, on the salary and the max, so the base is not, the base is the max, which okay. is still the same in the book. And what was changed is her stuff. Well, in the sheet that I passed around, yeah, it's the minimum step. Uh, that's the step that we're recommending. That okay. gets her to the max in the schedule. Okay, great, because the base is step one. The new pay is still above. Yeah, the new pay is still above max. Though. Well, the new you changed the base. You didn't change. Well, the, the new pay. pay uh, so I was just trying to understand the max is supposed to be. The, the doesn't include longevity. Yeah. The max doesn't include longevity. I know, but the max I thought. If you, I believe if should you, if you take fifteen, pay. if you take fifteen seventeen, and add it to, well, I think I did this. He added it to one. Uh, new pay is equal to the base plus, plus the step, step. Plus and then longevity. They the longevity, right? The but I thought the max is it, that's my question is max supposed to be the new pay, which is base plus step, or is max supposed to be base and you can still get a step? It's the base. Let me see if I can go out. So max is the base, right? Yeah. Max, max, max is the cap on the base on the base, and, and you, you can still so, so, so why does it matter whether her step is? 692 and or 2974, because in both cases, the base was the max. I don't know the right answer. Can you follow, Sheila, Carolyn? That's a good question. 
Well, um, I think we don't know the answer to it. I think it's classified as a step that's just moved. So, I guess I'm going to Okay, um, I'm going to stand corrected here, at least stand confused. So I think um, we'll have to come back to the future meeting and I'll clarify this. Okay, so let's. Um, that's a good question. I, I, Oh, it might be right. I just yeah, I'm, well, not, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. So we well, can, we reduce the we reduce the step the, in yeah. both the book and your sheet. The base is that, hasn't changed, and that's still the max. So we're only changing the step. And that just yeah, I have to go back and find sure. out where I got my reduction from. Uh, uh, Yeah, I can't answer that question other than you know, I hate to say this, it looked like I might have made a mistake, but we'll have to just it up more. Oh my God, hell has spoken <laughs> <laughs> I don't you think are you, you, all these years. Wow. Mm -hmm. no, I right. appreciate you admitting that and acknowledging it too, by the way. That's another thing I like about Charlie's humility of. So, Charlie, maybe you can get this answer for us by our meeting on Monday. And in the meantime, does anyone have any other questions on the proposed budget? All right, so let's postpone. Uh, so I, I just would, would like to add one thing. I, I sent around, I investigated with the controller this issue of the, uh, the, the cost of the auditor that was raised during the select board budget. So I, I circulated her response. Uh, which is pretty lengthy, but basically Powers and Sullivan recently got acquired by another company. Um, <clears throat> she said that their price went up two or 3,000 every, uh, I think she said two or three years. So, uh, you know, that's probably on, on the average around 5% or less increase per year. And um, in general, she's pretty happy with the uh, services that we get. So I, I don't sense that there's going to be a um, as long as they continue to get the team that's been working in town for the last several years, I don't think that there's going to be any effort to change it. And there aren't that many firms that provide those sort of services for municipalities in Massachusetts. And so, and what about the thought of how it's budgeted at 78, but all the actuals are at 65? If, it, if it's only if we know there's sort of a five percent increase every year, I didn't, are we ask, better I didn't ask you that question. Okay, that was in the selections question, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't look at it. Okay. Uh, I could find that out, or just for next year, because no, I think that was the idea, right? Bring, is we're going to bring this up on Monday, might as well, um, yeah. or just to let her know that next year 
maybe we want it close. I don't know what we have a position, but well, maybe we get more information and then right because decide seems, whether we need to take a position or not for next year. Grant, thank you. Uh, did you say, um, this, yes, the charter of accounts implementation is a big deal. It's also, my experience, been typically difficult to go back in the past. Um, did she, how many years did she indicate that we would actually have this data historically? Well, I expressed concern over the analysis that we normally do because the prior year is always the budget because we don't have uh, actuals. And then the year before that is actual. I don't know whether it should go back an additional year or not. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely ambitious uh, on her part. So that's good. Well, okay. I, I suspect she's had to do a lot of analysis of those expenses anyway to decide you know, what's happening in the future. More, more the conversion. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other questions on the control inspection? Uh, Charlie, I'd just be curious to know what version of Remus we use. Um, some of the networks in municipal government. I'm just genuinely curious. Um, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I know we have, we moved from a text-based system to a Windows-based system about five years ago, and in the last time that I was involved in that. We allocated a significant amount of money to move to the cloud, and I don't know what version that is exactly, but it's supposed to be cloud based. Okay. If we're cloud based, it's probably whatever they update it to on a regular basis. We're probably not paying for a version to upgrade. They're probably just automatically doing it. If they're not, we should. No, they, they do update on a regular basis. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It. Once, it's, yeah. once it's in the cloud, our support contract covers releases every quarter or whatever the, yeah. their release schedule is. Sounds like that's the best route to do it. Yeah. A lot of effort to migrate data from the way that you described. So I'm glad to see that that's something we have the ability to do in advance. Well, I think they were contemplating doing it out of house, out of house to achieve the good farm stuff. Any other questions on this budget? All right, Charlie, if you can get those answers uh, by our next meeting, that would be great. Do my best. And we'll postpone this. Um, and do you have another budget? We have um, retirement. <clears throat> do you want to do that, Mike? I'll start for any follow. I'll do this. <laughs> You want me to share anything? Uh, yeah, if you could, can you, actually, I could do it. Okay. Uh, one fifty three in the budget book. I, I would prefer to concern that too. Okay. Um, Got to get the back to the computer. Get the screen here. Is there a clock? Face clock, there's a clock. You can start out and then after. Once you start motion the whole thing, you have to complete it. Is that here? Yeah. All right. Um, so we, we met with um, Rich Greco, uh, who's the director of the, the executive uh, director of the contributory retirement board. So the first thing, uh, I, the agenda was missing. I don't know what happened to the agenda, but the, uh, just a set of definitions because there's a lot of buzzwords that fly around in the retirement budget. Uh, so something called uh, the Arlington Contributory Retirement Board is the 
board that manages the active pension distribution, collection and distribution business in the town. This board uh, does not report to the Board of Selectmen or to uh, the Finance Committee or town meeting per se. It reports only to PERAC. Uh, and PERAC is the uh, Public Employee Retirement Administration Commission. And that change happened about 20 years ago as a result of some large number of scandals among retirement boards. And uh, that's the way it's been run for quite some time. Uh, former town manager, um, Don Marquis, was on the PARAC board for a number of years. The Arlington non-contributory retirement system is something that we'll refer to when we discuss OPEB. And um, that's the retirement system that existed for employees uh, the work of the town up to and including 1939. And we were paying uh, basically survivors of the spouses of people who worked there and were still survivors up, up until three or four years ago. Um, and uh, under our uh, a prior finance committee chair, Mr. Tosti, we developed a, a process for dealing with those funds, which we'll, we'll discuss a little bit later. PRIT is the Public Retirement Investment Trust. That's that's where the funds are kept in this trust that get invested to uh, uh, for the benefit of the retirees. Now, this means that Arlington's contributions to the retirement fund that get invested are invested alongside um, the all the other retirement funds in the state. So the, so the PARAC uh, organization and its investment board, which is called PRIM, um, have a tremendous amount of leverage because instead of a hundred and fifty million dollar fund or whatever, whatever you know is, is in a local town, suddenly your money is alongside uh, billions of dollars, and, and it has much more effective uh, you know uh, presence in the market. And we have about. Just shy of two hundred and fifteen million dollars invested with them. Mm -hmm. The way I've been trying to learn this T stands for trust. In trit, prim M is the management board that decides uh, decides what prit is 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 directed to do. Custodial Bank M and T, formerly Merchants and Traders out of Buffalo. Uh, is where the actual cash resides. They are the definition of a good old solid bank uh, founded 1856 in Buffalo. They're the only bank, the only one of two banks in the, in the entire S&P 500 that have never missed a quarterly dividend since 76. So they are a, this is not an investment device, but they've been very steady with, 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 their, with their dividends. Stone Consulting talks to us. You see, there are lots of layers of oversight here of who reports to whom. Stone Consulting reports to us. OPEB, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with other post em, other post employment benefits, i.e., health insurance, which is which is uh, tracked separately from from the actual retirement. And the retirement financial year, just to note, is not typical this fiscal year. It's a calendar year. As we go on, you will see uh, references in the various slides to uh, uh, what, what do they call them, uh, Charlie? The, the, uh, the payouts to the individual retirees. They, distributions. Distributions is the correct term. It makes it look, uh, I think it, at one point it looks like uh, uh, it's a salary. It's not a salary, it's a distribution. Here's who are retirees look like average age hold on what about this nifty 24 yeah the, the when we talk about the active and the retired uh, members the active are the people that are employed by the town and are contributing to the retirement fund for with a slice of their salary to re, to repay period and and the retired people are the people that are getting uh, distributions from the fund. Uh, no. um, yeah, I'm reaching, sorry. So I don't know if you can. Well, I've got it up on my computer. Okay. So. 
So the, uh, this this is the uh, just the statistics on the active members, uh, those people who might get into the into the the, 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 the details of these things. Um, but it shows the the um, um, years of service and you know other other demographic uh, features like the age distribution and the years of service, et cetera, in the um, pension fund, uh, pension plan. And this has this this matters. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can't immediately see this um, by, by looking at it. But this all figures into what the total liability of the fund is, which is really what Stone does for. Charlie, what are inactive? Um, there are people who were in the fund and have uh, disappeared. Uh, they're not dead. They're not here, and they're not collecting. And mm. and the uh, but they have a liability, so it has to be accounted for. They're neither paying in nor collecting. But they're members, and they have assets in the fund. Um, the histogram on the bottom left corner is is describing our active members by by age classifications, and bottom right corner by years of service. Okay. No. We're going on to the next slide. Um, these are just uh, similar statistics on the retired members. Again, um, what what does this matter? Well. A, a very simple graphic example is that our retirees and people over 65, of which I'm one, live longer these days, thank God. But that's not good for the retirement fund because you have to pay out more every year. And that in, that impacts the delicate balance of, of what the town has to pay, what the employees pay, what the employees can take out, et cetera. Take it away. This is what Prick invests our money and all the rest of the money in. If you have the handout that was emailed out earlier before, you can read this better. This number here is significant, total core, and these are by thousands. So Prick is holding about uh, 100 million, 100 billion dollars in, in, um, in total for all the towns that have invested in, in this system. This breaks down the various types of investments that they have put it into from the top global equity, core fixed income, value added fixed income, private equity, real estate, timberland, which is chiefly a hedge against inflation because it, it runs opposite to, to uh, equities. Port and I do not know what portfolio completion strategies and overlays are, but I do know how to read a return call over here on the right. The 10 year and the since inception, I, I believe are the most significant because we are looking at a very long-term need and therefore we are looking at long-term performance and long-term gains. At the bottom for that 100 billion in aggregated management, the entire fund is returning over the last 10 years almost 8%. Does that hundred billion include the state? It represents all of the uh, co contributors to to Pritam. I'm, I'm not sure. It doesn't include state employees, yes. Right. It should. Have. It includes just Commonwealth. Yeah. Me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. And and since inception, nine, just one under uh, nine and a quarter. These are very attractive numbers. These are less less of fees, we are paying for it, what, what is it, 54 basis points, Charlie? Yes. 54 basis points, which in finance speak is 54 one hundredths of 1%. That's what it costs us to have our money in this fund. It's a very low figure for, a, for an actively managed fund. More typical of retirement funds, but especially, but still among retirement funds, a very low number for the management fee. Should have mentioned that uh, about $20 million of our pension fund was still being managed by a company called Makita. Um, 
and and that look, the last of those funds are being actually being transferred out as we speak to print. Um, and the, the reason is that they were involved in some sort of there were a portion of the funds that existed when we made the transition to to uh, print, but they were in some sort of long long term contracts, and they had to be you know rolled out as those contracts expired. And that's just about complete. So uh, the next slide. Yeah, Shall we take that? Yeah. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, how many towns are comprised in um, their fund? Do you know? I'm not sure. Alan, do you know that? How many? How many individual uh, slices that hundred billion comprises? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't. I I, I think there's a, it's a handful that are not. They they uh, basically force most of the towns to go in. In, and they have a, a benchmark that says if you go below a certain uh, funding level for so many years, you have to put the money in print. You can't have your local retirement board manage it. This rules. So that's so ninety percent of the time. All right. Thank you. Dave, Good. hold on. Dave, did you have a question? No. Back. On the previous slide, you mentioned Timberland. Is that literally tim yep. Timberland? Yes, it is. Oh, fascinating. Yes. Yeah, you can invest in that. Thank you. Oh, you can. Um, while they are not politically as popular or or as uh, green defensible uh, as 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 current investor attention applies to them, extractive industries are a terrific hedge against um, variations in the equity market. Interesting. Thank you. This slide shows, shows again, the result, the result of how we got to the final numbers in the previous slide. You notice in purple, it's a much more jagged line. That's a year by year figuring of what Fritz corpus is valued at. And that's going to be subject to to, to wilder swings, what uh, Stone Consulting uses is, is a, um, a rolling average over the prior four years to try to get a better handle on where that rise and fall is actually leading to. So the, the, the purple is the actual hard numbers from year to year. The green is, is smoothed out a little bit. And the smoothing out allows us to have a better idea of how much money is available. Remember, the whole game is to get to, you know, what, what you call, you know, you know, the dowager's retirement, where all the money in the retirement fund is all you need, and all it produces is what you need every year. But we're not there yet. We are getting there. And we have some projections, some realistic projections of how long it will take us to get to that point where the sum total of money we have invested in this fund with its professional management and oversight, we'll get to the point where it generates all of what we need to run our retirement expenses, but we're not there yet. So um, this slide explains a little bit about what's called the um, unfunded uh, actual actuarial Asset a actuarial accrued liability. And um, I'm up close. I can read the it. little the little box uh, on the upper left hand corner is the current year's appropriation, which is 17 million uh, uh, appropriation 17 million 175 uh, 692. I shouldn't say appropriation. The contribution to the um, to the, to the uh, print. Um, this. The normal cost is the amount that the town has to contribute to meet current expenses, net of what are contributed by the employees that um, are contributing from their, their salaries. The uh, net, this uh, 3HC payments, these are collections that uh, Rich Greco manages to undertake every year, uh, been averaging about $50,000 a year by going after um, other um, retirement boards that are uh, uh, 
get away with not paying for uh, their their share <laughs> for, for all of these expenses. For example, uh, one case that comes to mind, and I, it's not in this number, this is historical, but Brian Sullivan, former town manager, worked in other towns before he came to Arlington. And he was that uh, was town manager in Winchester and you know had other, other municipal uh, roles during his career. So in, in various towns, he contributed to their pension system. Mm -hmm. He retired from Arlington. Now let's say he retired and he had a pension of you know X tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, hundred thousand dollars a year or something to that effect. Then uh, when he retired, uh, then you know Arlington's paying that. But that Rich Greco has been running around the countryside to, for all of these employees that had previous municipal experiences, making sure that the town that got the contribution 20 years ago gives us the money or you know somehow reduces our expense. That's what that uh, net 38C payment line is. And, and the, the last line- uh, Just a second, Charlie. And conversely, Rich has been very successful in challenging the 38C contributions that other municipalities have requested of Arlington when somebody over at the other town retires at the top of the payment schedule and the bill comes to Arlington for X number of years at that number, which says, no, he worked or she worked here in Arlington for a much lower figure and our contributions to that person's retirement were substantially lower proportionally to what new town or final town was paying and working out these deals, it's it's really been um, you know on on his own in, initiative. It's really been advantageous for our overall scheme. So the uh, the, the thirteen million eight hundred seven thousand five thirty four is the amortization of the unfunded actuarially accrued liability. Okay, and. The way to think about this is it's sort of like a mortgage. Uh, you have a liability that we have to pay off. The trick here is, of course, that that mortgage amount is varying every year. And in the uh, the liability is this total actuarial liability that the, the town has that that varies from year to year, and that's offset by the assets that are in the fund. So if you have, uh, let's say, you have a hundred million dollar liability and you have 80 million dollars in uh, you know timberland stock or something then you have an unfunded liability of 20 million dollars and that has to be paid off over a certain period of time period of time <clears throat> and the state sets that period of time the um the problem that the reason why we need this consultant and this is a complicated situation is that two things two big variables happen three uh, the number of people paying into the fund vary every year. Uh, the, the retirees take out funds that vary every year because they live longer or they're more retirees, et cetera, for various reasons. And then, of course, the assets vary. The, you know, if the stock market goes up, they're high. If it goes down, they're low. So this is a very complicated uh, uh, calculation that has to be done. And the result is uh, the details are sort of shown on the right hand side, uh, which you know basically sa says in a lot of detail what I just tried to summarize. And the chart, the funding schedule on the left hand side says that basically uh, our current look, looking for our current unfunded liability is 118 million dollars, mm -hmm. and then based on a, our contribution increasing 5.5 uh, percent. Each year, under the assumptions of Ooh. the age demographics, uh, life expectancy, stock market cost, uh, uh, performance, etc., so we will white. pay off this liability <laughs> in no. uh, 2034. So, can I ask a question at this point? Go ahead. So. When we get to 2034 and we fully funded this liability, it looks to me like we get a $20 million reset. Well, theoretically, that's true. But practically, but wait, there's more. But practically, the town has, I'm jumping ahead to the subject of OPEP, but we have a huge liability for 
uh, health insurance for retirees that is not really funded. We've been we've been contributing to, to it, mm -hmm. uh, basically due to John Bilber's efforts starting about 15 years ago or more. But mm -hmm. it, they've been very small contributions. And so um, one of the, the lucky things that, we have, that we, we're, we have going for us is that um, there is no law right now that requires that it be funded at a certain rate. Uh, I don't know why that's the case, but that's the case. So, but the GASB, the Government Accounting Standards Board, requires us to report that liability on our balance sheet. And basically, if you fund the liability at a high rate, they allow you to use a discount rate that's more or less equivalent to what the improvement in the stock market is, which is around 7%. Right. Uh, if you fund it at a low rate, they require you to use the cost of funds for the town, mm -hmm. which is about you know 2 or 3% or something like that. So that makes that liability very large. So that has to show up on our balance sheet. Uh, from a practical viewpoint, as I understand it, most of the um, bond markets are happy that we're paying some money into the OPEB, and and so we get we continue to get good uh, bond ratings by, by the, uh, the rating agencies. Great. So when you say a high rate of investment to get the seven percent discount rate, how high? Do I, know? I don't know the answer to that, but it's got to be something similar to this. Okay. And and so uh, to answer your original question, Annie. The, uh, I want to say the consensus between Al Tosti and, and me, <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> but uh, the consensus of a number of people that I've spoken to is that when we pay off this, we use that funding amount to fund the, the OPEP. Now, we may find ourselves, before we get there, we may find ourselves required by the state to do something more aggressive. But um, I, I don't know. That's going to be a select board decision or town, you know, probably select board and probably town meeting. Do we have a calculation for the OPEB liability? Uh, uh, yes, we do. We do. Somewhere, yeah. 194 million. Yeah. We have 10% of it. But that's at a. Um, low discount rate as opposed to a high discount rate. All right. I'm just thinking how many more years before we get to these set three. Oh, we, we, what we're currently paying in there is not going to do much. No, no, I understand that. So anyway, that's, I, I think the, the, well, the thing the town really has to focus on, in my view, is getting this thing to you know, how What we do when we get there, that's going to be a good problem to solve. And this has been a moving target because every time there's a recession, uh, you know, market goes down, and then we wind up with a higher percentage of unfunded liability, and and then um, the date the, the state moves the maximum date out a few more years. You know, this is a never-ending saga. Um, uh, wait, Charlie, El has a question. Yeah, uh, thanks, Charlie, for the in introduction. Um, Right now, that's 10 years away from fully funding the pension system. Uh, and so uh, right now, if, we, if we're able to establish a policy, maybe starting from this committee, working to the selectmen uh, and the retirement board, that 100% or maybe 80% of the reduction there goes immediately to fund the uh, OPEB. Um, it, Right now, if we get that policy established, nobody's looking 10 years ahead. If you wait until you're a couple years ahead, um, the, the more spending people uh, on the uh, town might say, oh, my God, let's grab that money for pay raises, you know, anything else. So it might be good to, to get the discussion and policy uh, 10 years in the uh, now, as opposed to waiting to a few years closer to it, because then the money you could they could smell. Someone is looking at ten years. Annie, so 
what is the higher priority? Fully funding OPEP or eliminating the, uh, the structural debt? We still have to pay OPEP. The other way to eliminate the structural debt is required to fund at the rate he's suggesting. Andy, the only way you can get rid of the structural debt is to see lower expenses. Why? Let's let's focus on retirement budgets. When we have this discussion, we a bigger, fuller discussion, and it's a different time. But Michael, go ahead. I think we're about at the end, are we, Charlie? No, we have a few more. These are the uh, demonstration that Tara has approved our funding schedule and the amount that we are uh, expected to put into the fund. Um, just note that. Um, there's a line here that this, the town does not have to pay the full 17 million. The Arlington uh, Housing Authority is in this uh, pension plan and they have to contribute about uh, $600,000. So that gets our, our, our contribution down to uh, 16 million, uh, five, 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 six, four years. So I can make that a little bigger. So the um, the total that we referred to in the earlier discussion was 175 million 175 692. You subtract out the 620 thousand from the that the, 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 the housing authority has to pay. And the town's portion is 16 million 555 thousand 650. So. Um, So going to OPEB, um, the, the total town value that we have right now is, is uh, 23 million. And this just shows the gain uh, in the last year. Okay, let me make this a little smaller here. So, um, So the net liability in OPEC right now is about 194 million. I think that's what uh, Andy just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And in the uh, so I mentioned the non-contributory retirement fund uh, a number of years ago. Uh, Al Tasti was notice, noticing that um, but we were paying the retirees, uh, you know, 600, 700 thousand a year, and they were. Because of their age, they were becoming deceased and falling off that um, demand for, for contribution. So what we worked out was a plan to freeze that expense level at five hundred thousand dollars, and and as the retirees uh, passed on, we took the the money that was not that was no longer being distributed to those retirees because they were they were deceased and. Put that money into the OPEB um, trust fund. So, five hundred thousand dollars of the of that contribution that we make is associated with with that policy. Secondly, um, in two thousand seven, the uh, select board increased the contribution to the health insurance by retirees from uh, ten percent to fifteen percent. And there was a great deal of consternation and negotiation. And the, the agreement was that the town would contribute an additional $155,000 a year to the uh, OPEB fund uh, in compensation for the retirees increasing their personal contribution to the health insurance. And then as a result of the recent override commitment, the selectmen agreed to commit $150,000. So the the uh, amount that will be in a Warren article when the Warren article actually comes out is going to be $105,000. Questions? None? John. So, um, as you mentioned, Charlie, the uh, the unfunded liability going forward, it's not really an exact science. There's a lot of, uh, you know, I'm sure they remeasure it every year, you know, depending on the market and uh, also, I guess, our payroll and our hiring. Does it seem like it actually has gone down 
the last like three, four years. I'm trying to figure it out, but I don't really have any good historical we, records. We have a, somewhere here, I think we have a record. Um, it's not here, it's in the it's in the attachments that I it's on a slide. Page uh, twelve. Slide twelve. Oh, but that's that's for the open. Yeah. Is that what your question was? I was actually talking about the um the pension. Yeah, uh, let's see. I don't know if we took that idea. Uh, I'm looking at the financial statements and it looks like it's I don't know if I'm looking apples and apples or whatever apples and oranges, but it says the total net pension liability at December 31st, 2021 is 95 million, which seems very low. So how that means it shot up from 95 million in 2021 to 118 million. Um, so it's kind of low in the office. If you period. look in the in the in the uh, other documents that I sent out, that history is in there. Um when 2020 to 2021, we experienced a larger than average number of people leaving town employment. Leaving, so picking up a pension. Oh. retired. So uh, that would be, so in other words, that would increase the Fewer payees, fewer payees, more, more, pay, more, more people paid. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just curious if, you know, if the number I'm looking at is correct, that means that it's not necessarily going down. It's um, complicated because as Charlie alluded to, you've got varying amounts on all sides of, of the equation. Net asset value, net costs. So that's why the presentation begins with, with, with something that may seem like the tedious details of what, what is the age profile of our employees and what's the age profile of our current retirees. Uh, I can't calculate it. I think my uh, future son in law makes right? a business. Hang on a second. So this is there's a, a document the entire document from uh, Stone um, Consulting is is in the appendix yeah. and it's on the SharePoint. So this uh, these two charts show the uh, the history of uh, asset and the unemployment liability from 2005 to 2023. The uh, the unfunded liability is is purple, and the I don't know what's track. It's just called the assets, the actuarial yeah. actuarially yeah. actuary value asset. That means it's because it's using a smooth curve. We talked about earlier. Got it. So yeah, this is great. So the, the entire bar represents our liabilities. So it looks like the twenty four the liability is kind of sneaking up close to three hundred and fifty million, you know, give or take. And then the um the, the shaded part, the shaded part is the um is the unfunded. Unfunded then. So you can you know no, I, I, it's getting better. Yeah, visually it seems like it's getting smaller, yeah. Yeah, you can see the run up in the in the general uh, stock market beginning beginning in January of seventeen that was uh, you know dramatic. Yeah. Sure. You can also see the 08 drop. Yep. Which is not as bad Bang. as it felt. At the time. Yep. Right there. Yep. In hindsight, everything looks better. I don't know. The gap looks so much smaller in two thousand seven. Can I go back to the other? Although I'm just going to point out that doesn't include, so this is great for 23, doesn't include 24 or 25. Well, we, yeah. we, that's because there's, you don't get the data until about a year later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, this brings us then uh, past the OPEB to the to the last slide, which is a recommended vote. I, I hesitate to make this recommendation when Sophie's here. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers are too big for me. It's okay. You're safe. <laughs> uh, so the the uh, the amount including the 
the uh, housing authority is about 17 million 175 692. Take that out as 16 million 556 and the taxation induced impact due to our offsets of 14 million 944 uh, 696. So um, I would like to move that we approve uh, 16,555,650 uh, less the um, offset uh, for the taxation contribution, but but doing it so that we have approved the, the appropriation that is required by uh, Tara. So I, I made that motion the last forward. Second. Okay. Any questions for the discussion? Jordan. Just a quick question. The offset, do you know where uh, where that's coming from? Uh, water sewer, principally because they're, they're, there's a significant portion of the is working in the water sewer department. I figured it was water sewer that I would just ask. So they, that has to be paid uh, by the water sewer department, which is an end question. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, so I think we have a motion. I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have anything else for tonight? Reserve funds. Reserve funds. Mike is going to be there. One five seven. And the gray hymnal. You flip over the page to one five eight, you'll see the reserve funds. Mm -hmm. Amount of money allotted to all town departments in aggregate. Is that correct, John? Well, it's uh, it's. it's it's a it's a fund that can be spent by finance committee, basically. It's a fund for what expenses may occur in the future that we have not foreseen. Mm -hmm. But it's our fund, correct, Carmen? It's ours to vote out. Uh, it's principally ours, yes. And it's principally vote, it's historically been directed towards the town side as opposed to yes. the town and the school, except that in uh, 2022, we um, set aside almost uh, yeah, a little more than a million dollars to cover the potential increase in student growth, mm -hmm. which didn't occur, so we didn't use the money. Yeah. And this is for? It's 1% of the budget, more or less. And that's been a policy. And that's been a policy. For, for unexpected. Emergencies. And, and to the extent that the reserve fund is not used, it goes back into free cash and it eventually circles its way back into the revenue. Okay. So, do you have a motion? Moved to approve 2019326 for reserve fund as stated in the budget book. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? So there's really no actuals. We haven't actually spent. So we won't spend the 24 till the end of the year. Right. And then 20, but at 22 and 23 are showing a zero for both those years. Is that accurate? I don't recall spending any money to reserve fund next year. Okay. Yeah, that's what we did. We used to do a lot of snow money, right. but. For now, budgeting more realistically snow and ice. We're, we're budgeting at a roughly 75 to 80 percent of a rolling 10 year average of actual costs. So instead of just, I guess what we used to do is we used to budget snow and ice work at 100,000, even though we would pay a million or two million and then make it up through this. At the end of the year. Now we don't, don't have to make up such a big gap. And when the 
town clerk was saying she's going to need probably money for the election to prove that it's going to come from here when you vote for the election. Or within a transfer between departments. Okay. But may not come out of this. Okay. Come from. Which is also us. Yeah. Is, the the yeah. John, do you have a question? Yes. Um, and you, some of me explained this earlier, but I might have missed it. But um, so this year we're we're uh, budgeting two million dollars for this reserve fund, and then if it's not used, if we don't need you know this money at the end of FY twenty five, does it go to free cash or does it go to the like a stabilization type fund? Like a balance sheet it goes to free cash. Okay. And then our policy is to use every, so it doesn't get certified for another year. We won't probably just. We don't have it available for another year because the free cash doesn't get certified until sometime in September. Yeah. So, um, but in that following year, it goes into free cash. And traditional costly policy has been to bring in half of the free cash as revenue in the budget. And the other half goes. To a stabilization state in free cash. That's a state oh, okay. so just kind of perpetual perpetual yeah. reserve fund, if you will. Yeah. Because yeah. I think we like I always look at the bottom of the uh, long range planning. We have the free cash, we have the stabilization fund, we have the override stabilization fund. Um and it sounds like this item that we're discussing right now really just hits the free cash. It's in and out of free cash. It relates to free cash. Unless we spend it. Got it, got it. Of course then we and we have yeah. We have spent it in the past. I, uh, I recall we had, I can't remember if it was a fire or a flood or something like that in one of the town buildings, and there was a substantial, um, a substantial expense that wasn't covered by either the building fund or the insurance. I don't recall why we, that we spent this, this money. And, but having a, having a one percent reserve fund on a two hundred million dollar budget is not being extracted. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I don't know. I guess to is it like subject for another night? The um, stabilization fund and the override stabilization fund, like because those those are pretty significant numbers. Do they um do they even go through our budget or are they just yeah they go through our budget. Yeah. They do. I mean, they'll go through the operating budget. But we will have more articles to put money into them or take money out yeah, of them, okay. depending on what year we're in this year. We'll have more articles to put a bunch of money into the overhead. Right. 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 The select, yeah. select board, I believe, in this committee to maintain in the aggregate in those reserve funds something on the order of 5% yeah. of the annual budget. And I'd maybe go above that, but it won't go below that. Yeah, got it. So, so that'd be a warrant item. It wouldn't be in this budget. Yeah. No. Thank, thanks for the clarification. And much because of those reserves, we have such a good bond right away. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? So I think we had a motion that's been seconded. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Yeah. Anyone have any other budgets for tonight? Budget. So far. Go for it. Can you share? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. What are we doing? I take it. We just want to. Let me just download this so I can make it bigger. It's big. Yeah. 35. All right. All right. So I think so. Um, next slide. So I met with Patricia Shepard, the CIO, a couple days ago and went through this. 
Next, they have the IT budget itself. It's in the book on page 35, just to show you. That will come back. And the way I'll talk about this is uh, the positions and then the various projects. And then I'll go back to some of these line items and other things. Structure. Um, so the next slide is just the budget change. Um, essentially, it's gone up by almost fifty thousand dollars. Um, Chris just said, you know, basically anything that was left over went to the DPW building project. Um, says they are obviously we're doing DPW and IT will be moving to the DPW building. Um, she said this budget is pretty tight. Um, just a general overview. Um, going to the positions on the next slide. Um, <clears throat> good news here, the manager of enterprise applications, well, it says vacant in the budget book, has been filled. So they just started. Uh, <clears throat> so they have a full roster. It's nice. And uh, that she says, though, I asked, you know, are there other projects you wish you could get to? And she said, not with the current staff, they are pretty maxed out on what they can do. Um, a note, a um, couple notes here, just uh, salaries here, just on the town share, so we a dozen more in the schools um, that are not in this budget, obviously. And then uh, this happened last year, but the manager of the GIS system moved from IT to DPW back last year. So, so the projects, the, she said her highest priority is getting to the modernized GIS project. Um, the current system is actually based on Microsoft Access. She said that it can't connect to the new inspectional applications and permitting system. So mm. trying to get that um, thing out is working with the GIS manager and the DPW to do that. And jump in if there's questions. Um, cybersecurity. Oh, go back one. So this I know is a hot topic. Um, as Jim Feeney mentioned, they've got a, a grant from the state um, for training. Uh, it uses this Know Before training platform. I use this for some jobs. It's pretty simple to use. Um, so it's a good way for people to just get trained on. Don't click that link. Don't write your password. You know, your password shouldn't be your birthday, things like that. Um, it's just content, though. There's no money. When we hear grant, it's like, oh, how much money? But it's actually just access to this content. Um, the 5K that they mentioned is for what they call penetration testing where people want to break in and find weaknesses. Um, so there, there's many more aspects to this than just that, but that's what's happening. Um, she did mention they have a password policy for the schools and they're producing their in one for the town side. Um, and another way to do cybersecurity is to start moving things. If you move your service to the cloud, then, well, basically it becomes the cloud provider's problem. But they tend to have a lot of money to spend on that. So, um, so that's you know what's currently planned. There's more stuff planned. I don't know how much we want to get into everything on camera, but that's that's what's happening this year in this fiscal year. Questions, Jordan. Just a quick question. You mentioned there was an issue with, uh, I think um, it was uh, the GIS, and was that with, um, was that with uh, communicating with another software? You said. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a new permitting system that we'll talk about, um, and essentially what it is is you have an old homegrown system, and they're trying to move to something more commercial. You had me at access. <laughs> exactly. Um, was that was that uh, was that new permitting system? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll get again to it. Okay. Stay tuned. Uh, but yes, it's that that's been coming online this year. Okay. So, other questions on? Sophie, do you have a question? Charlie. I had two questions. If it's the right time I, on the position that got filled, is that going to change the salary or not? Do you know? Do you um, I don't. She did not mention anything about changing the salary. That's a good point. Um, so I can sometimes it goes up, sometimes it yeah, goes down. Yeah, depending on what they had to pay to get somebody. Right. Let me make a note. I could I could follow up on that. Show up a little bit. 
Well, I mean, if they just, I guess the question is, how soon the budget book got yeah. printed? Right, they got here. Yeah. And if we know the change now, then trying to get right now. And then the informics maintenance, the line 5294, I just had in my notes from last year that they had hoped to stop it this year, but it was. Yeah, I'll get to that. Okay. 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 Shall, if you have a question on what oh, we've covered so far, so we just asked. Oh, yeah, I'll get to informing so, uh, but it's the last one. Similar to access. Mm -hmm. right, Michael, do you have a question? Oh, all right. Take it away, Topher. All right. I just want to. Okay. So, um, so next, yeah, Microsoft. This is the license breakdown. Um, so essentially. There are some additional licenses. They've also moved some things around um, that <clears throat> from the online only, they've moved into the middle category and they moved some frontline workers into this, this middle category. This line. Um, and so this is an increase from last year because there's additional licenses, but um, <clears throat> some of this too is is... <clears throat> G3 is more secure than G1. So that was part of the motivation uh, for that. Um, and she did mention that, you know, Vimcom kind of spearheaded the whole movement of the 365, and she's very grateful for that. All right. Oh. So thank you very much. That was before my time. All right. <clears throat> Next, Munis. Um, so, um, you know, there's a steering committee. Carly covered the uh, EDA's. Uh, work with the controller's office. You know, she did, Patricia said, yeah, you pretty much specified what they wanted to do. IT did some help. Um, they have a new parking system up and running. And for the question of from Alan about, you know, are we gonna do more financial stuff and get away from Excel hell? Um, <clears throat> they would like to do cap general building with capital planning. So that's not this year. These upgrades happen about twice a year. Um, which they try to keep up with. And um, they do, um, in fact, they a big upgrade this summer, but then a rewrite of the financial module coming after that. So she's encouraging people like Alex to go to the Munis conference this year to start kind of learning what's, what's happening. So I think the net of that is we're slowly moving to take full advantage of this. Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, what does new parking system up and running? Is that for parking revenue received, fines levied? Uh, I don't know what is the that details. Mean? I think it is probably all of the above. Okay. Yes, more detail. I mean, we've got new meters. Yeah, the new meters. I think it is. Yeah. I expect we'll have information on the parking. Thank you. Also true. Um, digitizing documents. So this is the inspectional services, the and processes and forms. Um, inspectional services, like you know, is, is very happy with the. This is automating the app. You know, one side of this is automating the applying for permits and getting that stuff done. Like the inspectional services wants that. Um, other side of it is if you want to go look things up, um, it does seem like you have to click a lot more things and that there can be some improvements to that because um, you sort of just see a list of, you know, unintelligent IDs basically of what the permits are, not even a date on it, not metadata. So you click into it and then you see a ton of metadata, including the date and brief, brief description and then all kinds of other stuff you probably don't want to look at. And then you can then get to files associated with it Hitting it in the tab, uh, but um, you know, and then you can actually see, you know, the scans of the permits and things that you might be expected to see in the old system. Um, but it is, um, you know, I think they can continue to configure it. Um, it is fairly new that it's just come online, um, and they just retired a system that was based on Linux and Perl, so that would be advisable. 
And I asked, you know, what comes next? And she's hoping like vital records would be next, but you've got to have the town clerk involved. So the town clerk's interested. Yeah. She wants to digitize this year. Okay. So so that night, so they always have to make that happen next year. She also mentioned, you know, minutes and agendas could be another thing to get into the system. But I think it's still it's underway now, but in total of five or six years of public time. Charlie, I think you had a question. <clears throat> yes, thank you. So, uh, Topher, uh, was there any mention of the town hall basement? Oh, you mean what's in the town hall basement? <laughs> well, there are <laughs> you know, probably 100 years worth of records there yeah, no, that are being yeah. eaten by the rats. And um, the town has been talking about both the liability and solving that problem probably for 25 years. Back when Nancy Galkowski was deputy town manager. Okay. Yeah, there was no, we did not cover mm -hmm. that. Um, I can ask you. Know, well, I, I just wonder, I mean, you know, uh, uh, it's great, the, the digitization that they're doing is great stuff, but oh. I believe that there is a state law that says this material has to be preserved and made available. Okay. In some form. Right. Is that more than vital records? I know Julie talked about that. I don't know. Uh, I think it's, it's, I don't know what it is either. I guess when we, I have, remember this when we spoke with Julie, she mentioned obviously being very interested in digitizing the final records and mentioned the basement as being a big number store. So, so maybe that's, so maybe that record. will be addressed. Some portion of the, yeah, right. some portion of the basement. I mean, that's the, that's a question. I may not even be fully known what's stored there. So it's also a fire hazard. Yep. <laughs> It's one of those enormous problems that no one even wants to start, but it needs to be done into small pieces. Capital Planning Committee, on several different occasions, authorized money to do that, and nothing was done. Different, different quirk. Also, you know, the leak in the ceiling will put the fire out, Charlie. <laughs> Julian has been a clerk for a long time, four years. All right, so for go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so next um, upgrade to Wi Fi 6. This is a network thing that they've started. It's about an 18 month process project. This is just going through a new standard. Um, they're going to start with their rec move to Parmenter that we talked about, we talked about the rec budget. Um, you know, nothing, I mean, this is just a, you can map out the access points. You can't just establish them wherever you want. And then she thinks she can do it during the day and not have to hire people to do it at night. And can minimize any disruptions. So this is basically just a network upgrade. Okay. On body camera data line, we've talked a bit about this. I'll just uh, say again, they only ran the wire. Um, this year's budget covers that installation cost. Alan, to your question, there is a recurring 10K uh, service and support cost in, in the IT budget. Um, well, they're going to have to. I, Okay. You know, I mean, IT budget or, or somewhere it's going to have to be. And I did, I did ask, yeah, is this, you know, going to cover the 10K? And I don't know enough by 26 and on. I will say. So, um, and as we've talked, that's, I mean, I think as Jim said in his mail, you know, the management of the data is done externally. Um, and Patricia did mention an interesting thing just for disaster recovery, this is a redundant network. So this could potentially be used for that, um, which would be a, a sort of a win-win uh, to be needed. Um, and then other projects, obviously, it's the new construction. I mean, it's continuing to do stuff with Grove Street and tech infrastructure for, for the new high school. Uh, but those are the projects. And so with that, if there's no questions, I'll go on to the individual budget line items. Does anyone have any questions on what Tober has covered so far? I just have Annie one, and so one question about Grove Street. Am I correct that all of their equipment and so on and so forth is on a higher floor at Grove Street? It's not in the basement the first floor. I don't know. Grove Street, yeah. What do you think? So you mean the IT stuff or all the heavy equipment? Uh, IT stuff above flood. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I understand why you were asking. I wasn't sure if you meant no. just the IT stuff no, or all the furnaces and all the, the computers and so on. Okay. I'm much more concerned about computers than I am yes. about weather. I, I think the flood disaster Charlie mentioned was yeah. in the high school end of the computer yeah. lab, so server room. Because it wasn't at a low floor. No, I get it. Yeah. Sophie? So when APS um, Projects is that the tech infrastructure met under the school budget? Is do the school does the school budget have their own IT stuff, or is that all covered by the? Um... The school does have some IT stuff. There, I think their employees there's, are in their budget. But there's yeah, twelve employees in their budget. I mean, some of them yeah. capital. Yeah. Capital. I was just curious to see that on the sense of other projects because I would have thought any projects within high school would be under the school. Well, I think it's that it involves some kind of expertise. Yeah, the, it, it's a joint IT department. Okay. So, so okay. she manages the IT staff on both okay. sides, regardless. Of regardless. Globally. Yeah. And it's then it, I think you mentioned this, but it on the network maintenance, the actual that was very high for 2023, like 5292. Did you say that's DPW related? or? I'm, I don't know, I um, I'll get to the network. I'm going to go okay. through the items. All right. Sorry. Stuff. Charlie, did you have a question? Yes, uh, thank you. What is the disaster recovery plan or protocol that they have in place? Um, I don't know the details. I can find out if they have. If they have I know they've had some disaster recovery. I, I asked that as part of the capital plan. I think they said they're developing. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have. That's right. It was in yeah. New York. Mm -hmm. I just mentioned relative to that, I recall in many, many audits by Powers and Sullivan's, one of the action items was lack of a disaster, an IT disaster plan. I think it was triggered by the flood in the high school. And a few years ago, it, the auditors said that it had been satisfied. That there was, this is under David Good, there was an adequate disaster plan. So we know one exists. I don't know the details, but at least it exists sufficiently to satisfy the auditors. Yeah. All right. Um, so moving on. So the various line items. So I asked computer maintenance as opposed to software maintenance, and it's basically server warranties, uh, which would presumably decrease as we move servers to the cloud, which we would do for cybersecurity as well. And disaster recovery. And disaster recovery. And general uh, staff time. Um, Next is the telephone expenses. There's a 7K decrease in this due to retiring some of the centric lines. Um, we use RCN for LAN and Verizon mobile lines for the work of mobile phones. And then on the next page is just a breakdown of the telephone charges, which were you know, 13K for Verizon and 28,000 for RCN. Uh, fairly basic stuff. Uh, training. Really split, you know, 10K for the Munis conference and 10K for professional development for the staff. She mentioned they use the skills uh, training platform, which allows them to access content. And she just did emphasize that a lot of staff goals involved is they've got to stay current. And she herself got a certificate in management leadership, uh, which I think hit last year's budget. But she, but she graduated since we've met. So. And then consulting was basically, I asked what it was cost for, and she said it was cable and wiring, the new building, the new DPW building, so I closed. Other purchase services, what was that? And I said, that was, she said, well, so some job postings, and then this was kind of weird to me, but she had to pay for furniture for their new offices in the DPW building because it got valued on the value of the project. And she said, I had to buy furniture. I had to help some place for people to sit. So that's what she did. And finally, network maintenance came up, and that's just the you know, software cost and it includes <laughs> all kinds of things for Comcast, the web licenses, backups, Barracuda, firewall, and <clears throat> some work on, I guess, the DPW renovation. And last is everyone in Forex. So, yes, the new units is building up the data, but not all the water meters are converted. It was supposed to be done in December of 2023, but supply chain, the usual gremlin, 
you're saying. And DPW, she said they just they need access to the system for longer. They still need to be able to look at the old stuff, and that requires informics. Um, and the budget is forty four hundred, not the seven k that's in the budget book. That was the way that, uh, Jim had mentioned as well. Um, so yeah, we just it's a little bit Zeno's paradox here. We keep getting half the distance, maybe to getting rid of this, but it's um, still. I mean, she just said it really. They they have to. Goes on. And I said, so wait, you know, are you going to get every last water meter fixed? Because I mean, you know, that's going to take forever. There'll be people that you just don't get to or whatever. She didn't think it was that far, but it has to be fewer of them than there are now. And I don't know, you know, the DPW will have more information on that. Yeah, we can certainly ask about it. I was going to ask about just where, where they think it is and how cute it is. And, um, yes, thank you. So, Tober, you, you mentioned the telephone system. Is the entire telephone system now uh, on the IP network, or, or are they still using? There's still some landlines. Okay. They're not all retired. I, I'm not, you know, that doesn't say they're not landlines, but are they, are they Copper. Uh, time division multiplexed, or are they, they packet switched? So, you're asking if they're on voice over IP? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think they are, but I'll call the shot. Is the reason I ask is that there, there was a tremendous amount of cost in maintaining these copper wires um, between the buildings for the traditional telephone connections. And I don't know. I think they might have taken all those switches out. I don't. I don't know what the. Yeah, I'll I'll check for you. Any other? Questions? So, back to the network maintenance. So, what was the actual? Why was the actual so high in twenty twenty three? On the jump. On network maintenance, was, right over. Oh our, yeah, the, um, I don't know. Remember that cool thing? You know, they occurred one year, and that's because the previous year was hardly anything. One of those. Yeah, it might have been an encumbrance over there. Right, I'm just curious because going back in the book a few years, that's just. Yeah. yeah. I can follow up on these. That'd be good. You can also mail them to me ahead of time and I'll ask her. Oh, now, Topher, not everybody is you. Um, so, Keep going. so with that, are there any other questions? Yeah, Sorry, I, just to I will move the IT. Oh, so I do have one. Uh, okay. yeah, thank you. Um, minor, 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 but things like a computer paper that's been, is, they're not no more actuals. And that's just been bundled under supplies now, along with the in you know, hardware. Um, I assume the papers, yeah. Computer paper, they don't spend any time, but I'm sure they do. And supplies and fares, they don't even budget anymore. So that's just combined into I, one. Yeah, one it minor. looks like that's just the Thank you. Any other questions? Anything else from anyone? All right, so I moved the taxation total of $1,250,429. dollars Second. Any further questions for Topher on IT? So what was that number again? Uh, one million two hundred and fifty four twenty nine. What about the 2400 that uh, Informix got reduced? What do you mean, 2600 less? Or 2600? Did that reduce the total, you mean? Yeah, I. It seems like the expense budget should be reduced by 2600. Unless it got shifted, yeah. I don't think it got shifted. No. Is it still saying 7000 well, or you might want well, to just... move a new number? Move a new number. So when we have this late information, what do we do? Because the budget book says this, they didn't send a new sheet. Do, do. Can we just subtract 26? We want to just vote the yeah. that. Okay. Okay. So. I mean, you know, if you're sure of that reduction. Yeah, no, that reduction, I mean, we heard about it from multiple sources. 
I get one, two, four, seven, eight, two, nine. So yep, one, two. All right, so why don't we move we'll that? So, total of a million two hundred forty seven eight hundred twenty one dollars. Second, 320. One million two hundred forty seven eight hundred twenty one. Has this been a motion for one two four seven eight two nine? Has been seconded. Second. Um, any questions? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Right. Um, Topher, if you could just confirm that number yeah, with I will. and and with. Well, I'll let her know that she'll be voted on the board. She says no. Confirm with Alex as well. All right. Is there any? Are there any other budgets for tonight? <laughs> I think we're really being extremely productive. I just want to get a sense from people as to when they might be able to have budgets ready. Um, so I'll just go down the the list. Human resources. I think we have to wait for Carolyn. Treasurer postage. Um, do we have any sense? Well, Br Brian's the lead. I'm the second. Um, I've not heard anything from Brian. I got on email. If you want, I can go ahead with them. I mean, I can push ahead with those and talk to, I guess, June for treasurer. And I'm not sure who I talked to. Treasurer. Treasurer. Yeah, the treasurer. Yeah. Okay. yeah, if you could do that, that'd be right. great. And the same with. It's, Who's doing parking, Brian and Carolyn? Or are you, Brian, is it you, Michael? Michael? So um, you can see see if you can touch base with Brian. If not, then take it upon yourself to start moving the ball there. Um, facilities, public work, that's going to be a while. I know that. Yes, yeah, so we, um, uh, we scheduled facilities and public works for the last week of February. So or I'm not actually the second to last week of February. We're meeting with facilities on the 20th and DPW the 23rd. Um, so and then sorry, sorry, actually, we, yeah. sorry we, we don't have uh, DPW confirmed yet. Okay. Yeah. But we do have um, um, waste confirmed for this Friday. So I know there's be lots of questions on that from people. So they should get them to us soon. Yeah, Perfect. we know the obvious questions, but if there's anything that you know isn't sort of the obvious of what we're doing and how the negotiations are going and so forth, um, please get them to us. Yeah, so that's the facilities and DBW, huge budgets, very complicated. Get your questions to Jordan and Jennifer right away because, as they say, they're meeting with the department heads, and so this will avoid going back and forth. So, get your questions. So maybe sometime in the first two weeks in March, maybe we'll have budgets ready. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, thing to target. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, great, thank you. Insurance and uh, water and sewer will have to wait for the end. Insurance is scheduled for the 21st of March. Okay, great. And, and the uh, reclass budget was scheduled for the 29th of February. When's insurance schedule? 21st of March. So we would meet again until the schools meet after that. Um, well, March 21st is the Thursday. Yeah, so if that's so, when it's going to come out, we wouldn't meet again until the 25th, which is when the schools are. So that may be problematic. I think last time we did do the insurance after after the school, like a big yeah. yeah. We, did, we did the water sewer right afterwards as well. Yeah, so we want to finish with the school. We want to drop things up. Um, so we'll have to talk about that. Um, we might have to try to move again. That. Depending on the insurance number, and, you know, they say you know mid March or March seventh or something, but it hasn't ever. My recollection is never really better. It's usually third week of March. 
and capital is coming in on March 6. And I think and Minuteman on the 11th. Right. And I think that is it for the budgets now that we have to deal with four articles and the committees and commissions and uh, things like that. Um, Al, you want to talk about the warrant? Uh, <clears throat> right now, I just skimmed over the warrant um, someplace over New Jersey. Uh, but uh, one piece of good news, it's 67 articles, which is, you know, it's, it's not the lowest we've been, but it's it's not bad. Um, I, I didn't see too many new financial articles. Um, I need to talk to the selectman's office tomorrow about redoing the order towards the end, because uh, we always want to have the override stabilization fund to be the last article that we, uh, financial article we deal with. Um, I'm going to try to have, um, I'm going to, I'll try to have copies to Tara by Monday. Uh, and so that could be distributed. So um, maybe with a little luck on Monday, we could review the warrant. Okay. Um, and I think we'll need to have the town manager come in for a couple of them. I'm sure. Yes. So um, I can touch base with him as to availability probably at the end of the month or okay. in, in March. So um, you're definitely on for President's Day night. No. 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 This coming Monday is well, the 12th. So we'll meet the 12th to go over the warrants. We might have some committees and commissions that we can, we can put votes on. Um, and um, we'll follow up with the controller. And with any information we told for you have with IT. We won't meet on the 14th. And I'm thinking we won't meet on the 21st either. Um, so we'll meet on the 12th. Um, I'll make a final decision about the 21st by then. But it seems like uh, we have stuff to do on Monday and then everything else will have to wait. Um, so, um, so we'll meet on Monday, the 12th, no meeting on the 14th, Probably no meeting on the 21st, and then we'll reconvene on the 26th. And we'll be the 19th. Yeah, right. We're not meeting on the holiday. So we'll have President's Week free, and we'll have Valentine's Day free. And then when we get back on the 26th, then we will, I want to finish everything up that we can do. You, you haven't officially canceled the 21st, though. Um, I will officially cancel the 21st now. Okay. I'll let you know if there's a problem with the warrant tomorrow. Great. All right. Um, and Tara is chasing down the boards and commissions. You're dealing with art. Annie's dealing with arts, arts and, and culture and disability. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need yep, to meet which. with them? <laughs> I don't know if their budget request is the same. Right. I don't think to... we, we do. So I, I guess we just need to check with them to see if they're asking for more money. Yeah. If the answer is no, then we don't need to. Then I think we need to. And that's the same with all of them. And that's the same with all not of them. The dis we're not going to bring the disability in if they're not asking well, for more. We're going to reach out to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you want me to get hold of them or do you want to? Oh, I will. Yeah. I'll, I'll be on it. And we're still trying to schedule water bodies and the Community Preservation Act people. Uh, I think Carolyn is meeting with water bodies tomorrow night. And so she'll have uh, hopefully a date for us. Do we have a time for the uh, Community Preservation Act? No. Tara's working on that. And I think. And you said the second for or the uh, capital is. Capital planning is, is March 6th, Wednesday, 
Minuteman is Monday, March 11th. The schools will be coming in Monday, March the 25th. And I'm hoping the 25th will be our last real meeting and that we we're just that we can finish everything by that night. And if need be, we'll have another meeting after that. But I want to be able to wrap it up so that uh, Alan and Tara and I can start working on that. And I think we're we are uh, in good stead. So I think uh, I think we can we can do that. The only issue I think would be insurance. Let's see what we can do. Anything? Anyone have anything else? All right, we have a plan. Oh, I'll... I did have one note. Um, I emailed Charlotte about the restaurant pilot. Oh yeah, and her email back to me was, we have connected with a technical assistance nonprofit and with their help, we are starting the outreach process, somewhat in coordination with zero waste, single and plastic, single use plastic reduction initiatives. I think what that means is, Charlotte has taken the project on and she's pursuing it. Does that make sense? Which makes sense to me, to have a staff person making it happen instead of 14 year olds wondering um, and presumably, this is you know how she is in the budget. She had this technical theme for something else, anyway. So she's asking to also do this outreach, and then but nothing's really happened yet. Nothing's really happened yet. But all right, wheels turn slow. Yeah. All right. So. Um, We'll reconvene on Monday and um, then on the 26th. Okay. All right, motion to adjourn, anyone? So moved. All in favor? All right. All right, we're adjourned. Thank no. you, everyone. <laughs>